Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to New Brit Workshop. I've been asked a couple of times uh, about calipers, and I'm talking about things that you use to measure things in the workshop. Now, uh, I have digital ones. They've got a little battery in, and it's got a numeric display, and so it's dead easy to read them. But these aren't uh, the cheapest around, uh, and I have been asked uh, about ordinary or old-fashioned calipers. Now this is my original uh, set of calipers and I've had these for probably 25, uh, maybe more years. And you notice there's no digital display. And if you're going to buy uh, any calipers today, these are probably a lot cheaper than the uh, electronic ones. However, you do need to know how to interpret the display. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a giant pair and then I'm going to talk you through the process of how you read off the caliper. Uh, and then I'm going to take that technique a little bit further and explain to you how you can have circular ones as well. Now I want to just name the parts. Uh, this particular caliper is in both metric and imperial. Uh, and there is a metric scale here running all the way along length there. And that is in uh, millimetres. And then there's an imperial scale at the top here and that's in inches. I'm only going to look at the uh, metric scale down here. Now there is a vernier scale associated with each and it's this scale here for the metric side and this scale here uh, for the imperial side. And I'm only going to look at the uh, metric one and this vernier scale is calibrated 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and back to 0 again. So there are 10 uh, key segments. There's a little uh, locking lever or rather it's a release lever which allows the uh, the body to move uh, to and fro uh, to make a measurement and when it's released it, it then uh, holds it in position so that you can then comfortably read off uh, what the particular reading is. And these jaws here allow you to measure the external dimensions of something. These jaws here allow you to measure the internal dimensions and then at this end, there's a depth gauge, so you can measure from the very bottom of the calipers here to the very point there. And that's reflected in the same reading up here. Now, my simple mock-up of the caliper uh, is here. And it's made up of scraps of MDF, so it doesn't look very pretty. Uh, but I've tried to make it look uh, as though it might be able to do a job of measuring something. Our first job, having made the mechanism, is to put the uh, scale markings along uh, the main body. And in my case, it's the main body here. And this is set out in millimetres. Uh, and I'll do the same here, but I'll do it in centimetres. So th those are the actual centimetre markings all the way along there. And I used my steel rule to get those as accurately as I could. Now I'm going to put this into here, and you notice the zero position is there. When it comes to marking out this vernier scale here, uh, then what I need to do is to choose my ratio. Now if you look really closely here, you'll see that this lower scale goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 9, followed by the next one is a zero again. So there are 10 spaces between the naught there and the naught there. So on here now, between there and what is we know to be the 49 centimetre mark, there are 10 spaces. So therefore the gap between them is going to be 49 millimetres. So I can put these main lines where the numbers are, one, two, three, four, I can put those in by just doing 49, two times 49, three times 49, and so on. So I've got my calculator handy, uh, and I'm going to now uh, do my best to get these at 49, two times 49, and so on. And I'm putting my stronger glasses on to do this. So the first one there is 49. Now, I'm no good at uh, arithmetic in my head, so I'm just going to keep going. Uh, 49, 49 is 98. And that's that. And I'll now just mark those in so they can be seen nice and clearly. 
And I'm going to do the same nomenclature as we have on the real caliper. There we go. So now we have made our caliper. So there it is. Now all we need to do is measure something. Right, this piece of walnut is uh, 10 centimetres square. So I'm going to open up the jaws here. I'm going to pop it in. And I hope you can see that the, the 10 here is exactly on that mark there. Now this little piece of bamboo is 9 uh, centimetres square. And I put that on there and I think you can see that that is on the 9. Now what about something which is slightly different in size? Now this piece of off-cut MDF is 45 millimetres across. In fact it says 45.08, uh, that really doesn't matter, but 45 millimetres across. So if we now put this in here, what you're now seeing is that uh, we're not going to get an exact line-up here. It's obviously one, two, three, four centimetres and something else. And at this stage, we don't know what the something else is. And what we're now going to do is look along here until one of these marks lines up with one of these marks. And actually, um, bearing in mind this isn't the most, world's most accurate uh, tool, uh, it could be uh, the 5 or it could be the 6. It's certainly not the 7. So uh, for, for sake of argument, uh, let's say it's the 5 that's lined up. So this is 4 centimetres plus a half, which is 5 millimetres. So that's 45 millimetres, or in our scale... 4.5 units or 4.5 centimeters. Now if we now take this block here and that is a smidgen over 133 millimeters. Let's put it in here, move this down. Now we know it's 10, 11, 12, 13 centimeters plus a bit more and we're looking for where the we get to a whole number and again it, it's ambiguous because of my scale it's either a three or a four uh, but you can now see that uh, what you're doing is you're looking for a line up here uh, and that's probably the closest is where the three meets that green line there so that is one three three so it's 13.3 units. These are centimetres. 13.3 centimetres is 133 millimetres. So that's how a caliper works. This scale here doesn't need to be uh, up to 49. It could be, just as this one has been done, this one goes up to 39. Right, so this time our scale here uh, goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9 and 0 again over a space of 39 millimetres. So on this one it's going to be after 39 centimetres. And that's that 39 mark. What I've done is I've put a piece of fresh masking tape over the old stuff. So there's my 39. Now what I've got to do is, in a similar way that I did before, is to go along here uh, adding 39 at a time as I go along up until uh, the 390 point here. So here goes 39 plus 39. Next one is at 78. 351. And then the next one is 390. Now I'm just going to make those a little bit clearer. So these go now 0, 1, 2, 3, 0 again. Okay, now 
We've done that. I think we'll repeat those measurements again and see if they come out the same. Uh, the piece of walnut, which we know is 10 units, and there you can see 10 on the dot, and that lines up with our zero mark. The piece of bamboo is 9, and that lines up there with that zero mark again. This was just over 45 millimetres, put that in there, so we know it's 4 plus something or other. We go along here, it actually says it's 46, uh, 46 millimetres, or 4.6 centimeters 4.6 units and if we do it the long way now and uh, we know it's 13 point something or other one two three 13 point three units or 133 millimeters so it doesn't matter if you use a scale which goes from naught round to naught again in 39 or naught uh, to naught again in 49 as long as it's consistent. And so there we go, that's how a caliper works. And don't forget your real caliper can not only measure uh, the length of something, but it also can do depth, like so. So I now have that depth there, which I can read off the scale. Uh, and it also allows you to measure uh, between something. So I'm just gonna for sake of argument, do it between there and there, and I can then measure that off the scale. So your calipers normally can uh, work in uh, three ways. Uh, the depth, the width, uh, and also the distance between uh, two faces. I said earlier that I'd show you a circular version, and I believe that circular versions of vernier scales, or calipers, uh, were uh, the very first ones to be uh, created uh, probably by Monsieur Vernier himself in France in the, I think, early 18th century, somewhere about there anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, the uh, way this is laid out is I've done this on the CNC and uh, there's an inner part that moves with a pointer uh, and then there's an outer part here which is fixed. And the outer part is divided into uh, 10 degree intervals from one green bit to the other. That's, so that's 10 degrees, 20, 30, and so on, all the way around. And then the vernier scale, which is the uh, scale in black here, the angle uh, between each of these uh, segments here is nine degrees. So therefore, uh, if that's 10 degrees there, uh, that's nine degrees, the difference between there and there is one degree. And so if I move that over just that little bit, so these two are lined up, I've just moved it uh, anti-clockwise uh, by one degree. Uh, if I now line it up so the, the two is lined up with one like that, then that's two degrees anti-clockwise and so on. So with this you can measure any angle in whole units from naught to 360 degrees. And this is the sort of thing you'd find on a sextant and also on uh, other angular measuring devices, theodolites and so on. Now, so you don't have to go through all that complication of, that I've just gone through, uh, my digital calipers uh, are made by eye gauging and I got them from the Woodworkers Workshop here in the UK. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.